dito. Thank you po. Alright. Ngayon naman, ipapakilala natin ang ating mga hurado mga kasama ngayong hapon. Opo. Ang unang hurado, after passing the 1980 bar examinations, Justice Herrera first practiced law for 14 years before joining the judiciary. He was actively involved in litigation first as a senior associate in the law firm of uh, Quezon de Guzman, Macalintal, and Barot, and then as a junior partner in the law firm of uh, Ermitano, Manzano, and Associates. Justice Herrera was appointed presiding judge of the Regional Trial Court of Bulacan Branch 20 in May 1994. He was an artist judge for 17 years or from 1994 until he was appointed Associate Just, uh, Justice of the Sandigan Bayan on April 26, 2011. As an artist judge, Justice Herrera served as first vice, uh, vice executive judge of Bulacan in 2000 and 2001 and then as executive from 2001 to 2003. During his stint in Bulacan, his sala was designated one after the other as Juvenile and Domestic Relations Court, then Drugs Court, thereafter Special Election Court, and later on as a regular court. He was briefly detailed as assisting judge in RTC, Quezon City in 1996 to 1997. As an RTC judge, Justice Herrera is a recipient of the following major awards. The Centennial Award for Judicial Excellence given by the Supreme Court and uh, uh, the Foundation for Judicial Excellence on June 4, 2001. The Chief Justice Ramon Avancena Award for Judicial Excellence given by the Supreme Court on September 19, 2003. The 2004 Tangal Nambayan Award as Outstanding Public Servant given by the Civil Service Commission in August 2004. He is also the recipient of the following Special Award for Integrity in the Handling and Disposition of Drug Cases given by the International Narcotics Enforcement Officers Association, Inc. on October 20, 2003. Award of Recognition given by the Provincial Board of Bulacan on October 2, 2003 and a papal award given on December 8, 2020 by the Ramon Catholic Church. He was conferred the uh, Croce Pro Ecclesia at uh, Pontifice on the Sacred Cross for the Church and Pope. Throughout the years, he has received several other citations and commendations given by various organizations. Justice Herrera has been teaching law continuously for 32 years. Now, he is presently teaching the USD Faculty Civil Law and the San Beda College of Law. He also taught law at the FEU Institute of Law, the Marcelo H. Del Pilar College of Law of the Bulacan State University, and the Pamantasan ng Lungsod ng Maynila. He teaches civil and remedial law, practice court, trial technique, law, and values. He is also a pre-bar reviewer in remedial law and a lecturer and a member of the core uh, of uh, profession, uh, professors of the Philippines Judicial Academy. He has also been a lecturer in the mandatory continuing legal education program of the UP College of Law, as well as in seminars for prosecutors and judges organized by other entities. Justice Herrera has attended various seminars, conventions, and training programs in the Philippines abroad. Justice Herrera graduated from the UST Faculty of Civil Law in 1979 and passed the 1980 bar examinations. He was the president for 11 years of the UST Law Alumni Association. He is a member of the Board of Trustees of the Society for Judicial Excellence and chairs the screening committee in the search for outstanding first level trial court judges. He is a member of the Supreme Court Subcommittee for the revisions of the Rules on Criminal Procedure. Justice Herrera is a member of the Couples for Christ and Knights of Columbus. He is also currently the chairman of the Paris Pastoral Council of the Holy Trinity Paris in Quezon City, where he also served as a special minister of the Holy Communion. He and his wife headed the family and life ministry of the Paris. Justice Herrera was considered by the Judicial and the Bar Council for uh, promotion to the appellate court more than 20 times. He made it 12 times 
to the short list of nominees uh, submitted by the JBC to former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo nine times for the Court of Appeals and three times for the Sandigan Bayan. On his 13th nomination, he was appointed by President Benigno Ezequino III as Associate Justice of the Sandigan Bayan. Justice Herrera now chairs the second division of the Sandigan Bayan. He also chairs the Sandigan Bayan Committee on Rules that drafted the 2018 revised internal rules of the Sandigan Bayan, which was approved by the Supreme Court. Mga kasama, ang ating unang horado, walang iba kundi si Justice Oscar C. Herrera Jr. Opo, uh, paki... Uh, just is naka mute. mute po kayo. Uh, maraming salamat po. Napakahaba naman ng uh, introduction. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you for that uh, introduction and a pleasant afternoon to everyone, no? The uh, two protagonists, no? We expect a fierce debate, no? Although it will be friendly and a uh, healthy debate, no? Uh, sponsors, thank you for inviting me and I would like to acknowledge the presence of a uh, great good afternoon. My uh, uh, colleagues in the judiciary, my former chairperson of Sandigan Bayan, no? uh, the Honorable Justice Teresita Baldos, and a good friend. No? So, kalaro ko po ng basketball ito, no? Justice uh, Alfredo Ambuan. No? So, good afternoon and uh, thank you for that introduction. Uh. Good afternoon, Justice. Thank you po. <laughs> okay. Ang ating susunod na hurado naman mga kasama, Excellence is never an accident. It is always the result of high intention, sincere effort, and intelligent execution. It represents the wise choice of many alternatives. Choice, not chance. Determine your destiny. It is on this uh, premise that uh, I will take you down the road to know our guest of honor. Probably it is the most significant, if not the best, and memorable occasion I have ever attended. Okay. Uh, his academic and professional records are par excellence. He finishes elementary grades at the Sawang Barrio Elementary School, Kapul Northern Samar, as class valedictorian. A consistent first honor in first and second year high school at the Treasure Island Academy, Kapul Northern Samar, and later transferred to Manila at the Philippine College of Criminology and graduated as class salutatorian. He graduated Bachelor of Science in Agriculture and Biosystems Engineering at the University of Eastern Philippines and is a licensed agricultural and biosystems engineer. His professional career was launched when after graduation he was immediately hired as instructor one of the UEP College of Engineering. Having obtained the number one rank in the computation of grade point average among the graduates, hence a class valedictorian partida dubbed as drunken master. He served the College of Engineering for nine years. Then he became the Dean of Academic uh, Mar uh, Mariners Polytechnic College in Naga City for six years. He graduated with a Juris Doctor Bachelor of uh, Laws degree at the University of Nueva uh, Caceres in Naga City. Case okay, with uh, VP Lenny Robredo, his classmate and is a member of the Philippine Bar. Having passed the bar exam, he became the first engineer lawyer of Northern Summer. He engaged in public uh, uh, private practice as a lawyer for five years and uh, being then the in-house counsel of the Crusade Against Violence with Senator Escudero, a lawyer of the Volunteer Against Crime and Corruption. After five years of private practice, he joined the public attorney's office in Pasay and Naga for three years, after uh, which he was appointed as professor of the UP, or UEP College of Law. And uh, after two years of his stint as a UP, uh, UEP College of Law professor, he was appointed as assistant prosecutor of Naga and later transferred to Manila and designated as special prosecutor of the Bureau of Immigration. After five years as public prosecutor, he was appointed as Metropolitan Trial Court Judge 
of Manila and was awarded as Outstanding Artist Judge together with four other Artist Judges. After eight years as an Artist Judge, he was appointed to a higher tribunal as Associate Justice of the Court of Appeals. Presently, he is the senior member of the 14th Division of the Court of Appeals, Manila having demonstrated and achieved exemplar achievements in his uh, personal and professional life. Our guest of honor, mga kasama, at uh, isa sa mga hurado natin ngayong hapon, walang iba kundi si Associate Justice Alfredo Dalu Capas Ampuan. Magandang hapon po, Associate Magandang Justice. Na. Good afternoon, Justice. Thank you for the Magandang, time. Good afternoon, classmate. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Uh, Attorney Claire was my classmate in the uh, Master's of Law degree at the University of... Uh, at the... UST. Uh, University of Santo Tomas. Uh, <laughs> Thank that you, Paul, Justice. Uh, that was, when was that, right, Claire? Po? 19, when was that? I forget na the year, <laughs> Justice. <laughs> Let's forget the, the year. <laughs> Malalaman nila age natin. Ni Chaira. Ay, no. Kabasketball ko po ang ating, ano, chair in this uh, debate. Si Justice Herrera. Ano, sir, kailan tayo ulit mag-basketball? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you po, Justice. Okay, okay. Thank you very much Apo. for the uh, introduction, Claire. Okay, our next uh, judge, mga kasama, 2018 to present, Chair, Construction Industry Arbitration Commission, 2003 to two, uh, 2016, Associate Justice and Digambayan, 1994 to 2003, Presiding Judge, Regional Trial Court, uh, Branch 17, Malolos, Bulacan, 1984 to 1994, Special Prosecutor, Officer 3, OSP Investigator 3, Chief Legal Officer, all of the Office of the Tanod Bayan. Uh, Rename of the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor, 1974 to 1984, Attorney for Attorney Associate, Attorney uh, Technical Assistant of the Office, uh, Justice uh, Ramon C. Aquino, Supreme Court, 1971 to 1972, Legal Officer, One, Land Registration Commission, 1970 to 1971, Stenographer, Board of Boards of uh, Examiners. Well, 1966 to 1970, Juris Doctor, University of Santo Tomas, Scholar. 1962 to 1966, Bachelor of Arts, Major in English and Minor in Sociology, University of Santo Tomas, Graduated Magna Cum Laude. Secondary Education, High School, St. Therese College, Quezon City. Elementary Education, St. Therese College of Quezon City. A uh, accreditation uh, course Philippines Dispute the Center uh, 2017 and 2014 European Criminal Justice System Trier. Mga kasama, uh, siya din po ang Vice President and Member Board of Trustees UST Law Alumni Foundation and Consultant uh, Divina Law. Opo, uh, naging uh, chairperson din siya ng Sandigan Bayan Gender and Development Committee from 2009 to 2016, member of Best Written Decision Award, RTC level given by the Philippine Women's Judges Association, March 12, 1999. Finalists, 1999 and 2000 awards for Judicial Excellence and 2001 Centennial Awards for Region 3. Past President, RTC Judges Association of Bulacan uh, 2003, Past first vice exec, uh, executive judge of Bulacan 2003. Past uh, second vice executive judge of Bulacan 2001 to 2002. Former cases editor of UST Law Review 1969 to 70. Most exalted sister, Astrea Law Sorority. Keeper of the scroll, Astrea Law Sorority. Vice president, UST Law Dramatic Guild and member of ALPA. Lambda Sigma Sorority UST College of Arts and Letters. Mga kasama, mar magaling din siyang magpatutok ng piano, cross-stitching, and cross-word puzzles. Mga kasama, ang ating uh, susunod na hurada ay walang iba. 
retired uh, Sandigan Bayan, mga kasama. Justice. Justice Teresita V. Diaz Baldos. Magandang hapon po, uh, Justice. Good afternoon po. Hi, hello. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Justice, walang kupas ang ganda. <laughs> magandang, magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. Um, maraming salamat for the very generous introduction. Good afternoon also to my co-judges and of course, the combatants in this afternoon's affair. Uh, Kiginagagal ako po at kinararangal na maanyayahan para maupo bilang isa sa mga kurado sa pagtatanghal natin ngayong hapon. And uh, I, I expect a very promising and very enlightened debate this afternoon. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Thank Opo. you po. Okay. At bago po tayo mag-umpisa, paalala lang po, uh, <laughs> gusto po nating sabihin sa ating mga nanonood sa YouTube at yung mga nanonood sa ating Facebook Live, wag, po, uh, wag nyo po munang uh, ilalive sa inyo pong mga uh, sariling Facebook page at gusto natin lahat po tayo ay nakatutog lang rito sa iisang ano po, no, platform ng uh, DCXL, yung YouTube namin at yung Facebook para nang sa ganun, lahat po ng inyong mga opinion, lahat po ng inyong mga komento ay po pwede iisa lang po ang uh, babasahin natin rito sa ating special na presentasyon ng ating uh, programang Usapang Batas ang The Debate. And, uh, ini- si partner, pati yes, yung so, comments nila, is, ipapakita din natin ipapakita habang nagkaroon ng debate. Opo, at uh, gusto rin namin kunin ang pagkakataon na please like our, mm-hmm. and uh, subscribe ang aming YouTube channel DCXL News at ang aming Facebook DCXL News. Na bueno, mm-hmm. mga kasama. And don't forget, yes. uh, uh, refrain from using uh, maligning words. Yes. Uh, debate lang y- po ito. Yun ang napaka-importante yes. uh-huh. partner. Okay, mga kasama. Para sabihin na uh, sa atin kung paano po ang magiging tagbo ang mechanics ng ating debate ngayong hapon. Ito na ang ating nag-iisang abogada ng bayan mga kasama bilang moderator ng ating debate ngayong hapon para sa mechanics. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon everyone in the Philippines. Good morning or good afternoon or evening also in other parts of the world. O oh, ano ba, kinabahan ba kayo? Eh of course, nationwide and worldwide tayo because of the internet coverage. Welcome to uh, welcome po to the special edition of Usa Pambatas because today is a Sunday, 17th of September 2023 at alam niyo naman ang regular programming natin ay eh, mula Monday hanggang Friday lang po, 7.30 hanggang 9 o'clock na magandang gabi. Ako pong inyong likod, Atty. Claire Castro and I will be your moderator for this much-awaited and talk about debate in different social media platforms and other fora by people of all walks of life, lawyers and non-lawyers alike. This debate is between a private practicing lawyer and a public prosecutor. And of course, this debate is out of the courtroom. They took it upon themselves to engage in an intelligent and friendly discussion of the issue at hand. May mga issues tayo tungkol sa mga patuloy na pagtaas ng produktong petrolyo, pagtaas ng sibuya, silid, West Philippine Seas, and the new game in town, the Confidential Intelligence Funds. Despite these interesting issues ho- hovering around, the management of RMND XL 558 Manila is gracious enough to sponsor a debate which our participants decided to discuss in full and even debate on the most interesting topic, most interesting topic, that is sex. Oh, I mean, age of sexual consent, whether it is 18 or 16. The age of sexual consent is the age at which a person is considered to be competent to consent to sexual acts. As a result, when an adult has sexual relations with a child, they cannot legally claim that it was consensual. Instead, it may be referred to child abuse, based on RA 7610 or known as Anti-Child Abuse Act that defines child as a person below 18 years old or those over but are unable to unable to fully take care of themselves or protect themselves from abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation or discrimination because of the physical or mental disability or condition. In the light of the idea that a young child is assumed to lack discernment and to, the, to be incapable of providing informed approval or consent to a sexual act the age of consent becomes relevant. The Revised Penal Code and the Special Protection of Children Against Abuse, Exploitation, and Discrimination Act, which is RA, 90, uh, RA 7610, have been amended by Republic Act No. 11648, which was an- signed by the former President Rodrigo Duterte on March 4, 2022, to be better protect uh, children 
from sexual exploitation and abuse, the law raised the threshold age for statutory rape from 12 to 16 years old. My question to all qualified viewers and listeners, when did you have or when did you first have sex? Oops, MRTCB, MTRCB, excuse me po. For ex uh, academic and legal purposes only. Nothing scandalous nor indecent plays are meant. Let's go back to our senses. Try to recall, reminisce, and savor the moment. Maybe some of you are smiling, some of you are pr proning. Um, but anyways, we need parental guidance. Stick tong patnubay ang kailangan for those who are still minors watching us. To all parents out there, do you approve the idea that your underage child be active in sex? When is it acceptable for a child to give his or her permission for sex based on our existing laws and jurisprudence? I can see some eyes rolling. Hold your horses. Catch your breath. Don't make any violent reactions because we are not yet in the main event. This is not. This is just an intro of our topic for today's debate. Save those feelings with the debater's explosives on the topic. And so because of this, we are very honored and thankful uh, for the privilege of having the presence of our three legal luminaries uh, who were welcomed a while ago by our uh, host. Uh, of course, Justice Teresita Diaz Baldos, uh, Justice Alfredo Ampuan, and our uh, Chief Adjudicator, Justice Oscar Herrera Jr. Okay, now going back to the main event, our proposition, let it be resolved that the age of sexual consent is 18 years old. Attorney Randolph Billy Bayan will take the affirmative constructive side. Fiscal Erwin James Badayos Fabriga arg argues that uh, age of sexual consent is 16. Hence, he will take the negative constructive stance. We do not know what will happen after this debate, but one thing is for sure, we will gain tons of knowledge that is unquantifiable and intangible, and that is paramount. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the modified Lincoln-Douglas debate format, and here are the ground rules. The affirmative will make his opening speech for a maximum time of uh, 15 minutes, after which he will be cross-examined by the negative for a maximum time of 8 minutes. Okay? Uh, a 2-minute break or prep time will be allo allocated in the preparation for the negative constructive speaker. The negative will give his opening speech or rebut for a maximum time of 15 minutes, after which he will also be cross-examined by the affirmative speak speaker for a maximum time of 8 minutes. Now, a 2-minute break or prep time is given in preparation for the questions and answers uh, to be provided by the judges. Uh, so, each judge may ask one question and a follow-up question for every participant. The participant is given a minute or one minute to answer the question and the timer will start immediately after the question is completely stated by the judges. After the question and answer portion, the affirmative will start to deliver the summation as part of his closing speech. This word, the participant will do his best to get the viewers and judges to, to sway to his side. This will be for a maximum of five minutes. The negative is accorded the same privilege immediately thereafter. That will be our, uh, that will conclude our debate. And then our judges will express their opinions on the statements of the participants and um, they will also give their uh, opinion on who seems to have convinced them uh, with the points and discussion being laid down. Okay? In addition, the timer will be shown on the monitor for transparency and accuracy. Mago buzzer ka, partner, no? After the time, no? Yes, partner. Time's up. Magkakaroon ng buzzer. So once the time stops, a buzzer will be heard and uh, we will try to, the micro mode will be off. off. Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen, are you ready? Okay na. Uh, we are live. No? Copying Bruce Buffer. We are live. And let's get ready to rumble. The world war begins now. Gentlemen, for the affirmative. Attorney Libayan. Yes, hello. Okay. Okay. For your opening speech, are you ready now? We will yes, show the timer. Okay, yes, timer. Please. Wait lang po. Timer. 15 minutes. Okay? Okay. Nakita naman ni Attorney Libayan yung timer. Parang hindi ko nakiki... Ayan na. Okay. Attorney Libayan, a gentleman for the affirmative, your timer starts now. 
All right. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, before I start, uh, gusto ko muna pong batiin, syempre, uh, yung ating mga adjudicators, like I said, uh, I am extremely humbled. And also, Fiscal EJ, thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, to the hosts, Attorney Claire as moderator, thank you very much din po. Now, so I will start. And uh, it's just fitting, I guess, that we start how actually people thought that age of cost sexual consent is 16 or before it was 12. Ang nangyari ho dyan is there was poison, poisoning of the well. In relation to media and all other sources, they, will, they, they are showing, and uh, please allow me to screen share, they are showing that the age of sexual consent was raised was raised from 12 to 16. So if you can see your screen, if a, a simple a simple search of uh, the age of sexual consent in the Philippines, you will see that it's 16. And if you scroll down, everything you will see here says the age of sexual the age of sexual consent was raised to 16. The age of sexual consent was raised from 12 to 16. Philippine raises age of sexual consent from 12 to 16, when in fact, that is not true. Why? Because we have prevailing jurisprudence, and I will show that to everyone later. That is the basis. That's our basis. Yung po dapat yung maging basihan natin. Batas, case law. Hindi po yung mga balita kung saan sila ay nagre-rely sa maling batas. Ito po kasing paglabas po nung uh, bill na pinirmahan ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte, it does not actually talk about the age of sexual consent. It is actually about statutory rape. And if you will allow me to present once again, Ito po yan. The age of sexual consent is still 18. Okay, why? Ito po, no? Because a minor child still has the same definition. A minor or a child still has the same definition. What is the definition of, uh, or who are minor children? They are people who are below 18 years of age. The confusion came actually even even before Republic Act number 11648 which was enacted March 4, 2022. They said it was 12 when in fact it was not. There is a case which I'll be presenting later the case of Udang. And it is also worthy for us to note tignan po natin dito no this Act is an act promoting for stronger protection against rape and sexual exploitation. We take note of the word promoting for stronger protection. How is it or how will this be a stronger protection when the age of sexual consent here as they interpret it was reduced from 18 to 16? And I will explain that to you later. Now, this is the relevant pro pro provision there. Section 3, Section 5B, 7, 9, and 10 of the Republic Act. Number 7610, otherwise known as Special Protection or the Child Abuse Law, it was amended as follows. Section 5, and uh, if you allow me to read, ch Child Protection and Other Sexual Abuse, ch children, whether male or female, who for money, profit, or any other consideration, or due to coercion, or influence of an adult. I would like to emphasize on that one influence of an adult syndicate or group indulge in sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct are deemed to be children exploited in prostitution and other sexual abuse so pag titingnan po natin dito it is clear na dito sa batas na ito actually they are not talking about consent they are talking about the immateriality of consent because it raised it raised the age wherein wherein uh, a person will be liable for uh, this one 
statutory rape and statutory acts of lasciviousness. Okay, so so now that we know what happened here, let's move on. 18 is the age of sexual consent. That was enshrined in Malta versus People, GR number 16473. Uh, it was uh, decided on September 21, 2007. It said there, unequivocally, consent of the child is immaterial in criminal cases involving violation of Section 5, Article 3 of Republic Act 7610. It was further, it was further said in People of the Philippines versus Udang, GR number 16473, January 10, 2018, the same statement, consent of the child is immaterial in criminal cases involving Section 5, Article 3 of Republic Act 7610. Okay, so in this particular case, there is there is a statement that we can actually say that age of sexual consent is 18. So how come that when uh, this Republic Act number 11648 was promulgated or became a law age of sexual consent became 12 to 16 when in fact January 10, 2018 18 po siya kasi nga ang bata sinabi dito hindi siya pwedeng magbigay ng consent kasi magiging sexual abuse ito okay ngayon that is the general rule. The general rule is 18 is the age of sexual consent. Now, there is the Tulagan case. The Tulagan case is the one that are trying to say that abandoned the Udang case. The citation of this one is People versus Philippines. Oh, uh, sorry. People of the Philippines versus Tulagan, GR number 223-363, March 12, 2019. It's, it's uh, later than uh, the Udang case. And here, it has an exception. Okay? This is the exception that they are saying, that the Udang, uh, that they are using, saying that the Udang case is not applicable anymore. But it is actually still applicable. I will quote from the case itself. It says here, we take exception, however, to the sweeping conclusions in Malto, that a child is presumed by law to be incapable of giving rational consent to any lascivious conduct or sexual abuse and that consent of the child is immaterial in criminal cases involving violation of Section 5, Article 3 of Republic Act 7610. What is the reason for the exception? Please take note, this is an exception. Because they would virtually eradicate the concepts of statutory rape and statutory acts of lasciviousness and trample upon the express provisions of the law. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how did this Tulagan case overturn or abandon the Udang case? It did not. 18 is still the age of sexual consent and I have another case to show you. Here, let's continue. It says here, however, considering the definition under Section 3, Republic Act Number 7610 in the term children, which refers to persons below 18 years of age, are those age or those over but are unable to fully take care of themselves to protect themselves from abuse, neglect, cruelty, exploitation, or discrimination, blah, 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 blah. Okay? In Malto, they said there is a sweeping statement. In this particular case, they said consent may be material and actually it can be used as a defense. So, ladies and gentlemen, it is merely a defense. Now, let's go to the next one. And people of the of of uh, people of the Philippines versus Udang, okay, there was only made an exception. The rule is still for the protection of the children, for the best interest of the child. 
So it says here, a child cannot give consent to a contract under our civil laws. This is on the rationale that she can easily be the victim of fraud as she is not capable of fully understanding or knowing the nature or import of her actions. The state, as parents patray, is under the obligation to minimize the risk of harm to those who, because of their minority, are as yet to unable, unable to take care of themselves fully. Those tender years deserve its protection. Also, it says here, for this reason, a child should not be deemed to have validly consented to adult sexual activity and to surrender herself in, uh, in the act of ultimate physical intimacy under a law which seeks to afford her special protection against abuse, exploitation, and discrimination. So that's it. Now, here, even if the parents of the child, even if the child himself or herself gives consent, the state can prosecute. Because it says here, the child or the, the state can intervene, intervene in behalf of a child when the parents, guardian, teacher, or person having care or custody of the child fails to or, or unable to protect the child against abuse. Now, this is my last nail on the coffin. This is a late, uh, later case. It's June 14, 2021. It is the case of uh, De La Cruz versus People of the Philippines, GR number 245516. It says here, further, a child is deemed subject to other sexual abuse under Section 5 of Republic Act Number 7610 when the child is subjected to lascivious conduct under the coercion and influence of any adult. Ladies and gentlemen, this is June 14, 2021. The, the, the Tulagan case is 2019. Case law clarifies that intimidation need not necessarily be irresistible. It is sufficient that some compulsion equivalent to intimidation annuls or subdues the free exercise subdues the free exercise of the will of the offended party. This is especially true in the case of young, innocent, and immature girls who could not be expected to act with equanimity of disposition and the nerves of steel. Young girls cannot be expected to act like adults under the same circumstances to have the courage and intelligence to di disregard the threat. Ladies and gentlemen, children, children cannot engage validly sexual consent because adults and ladies and gentlemen it also it also said in this particular case it cannot be denied that the presence of coercion and intimidation is attendant in this case as aptly found by the rtc and the ca the fact that the accused is a subject teacher of aa played a great role for the latter to satisfy the starly desires as laid down ladies and gentlemen this is these are the most important uh important matters in this case and in relation to my position as laid down in people versus erojo the court and people versus Clado, the court has determined that the vast difference in age between the victim, the victim and the offender is indicative of coercion and intimidation. Now, the Supreme Court also said clearly, AAA, a minor was vulnerable and would have been easily intimidated by an attacker who is not only a grown man, but is also someone exercising moral influence or ascendancy over here it is doctrinal that moral influence or ascendancy takes the place of violence and intimidation now let's go back to let's go back to the the case republic act number 11648 like i said it does not speak or talk about age of sexual consent, it talks about immateriality of consent, and the cases that I gave you clearly says that the age of sexual consent is 18. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, to the gentleman for the affirmative. Uh, we would like to call uh, the gentleman for the negative for the cross-examination. Eight minutes will be allocated for this. Gentlemen, for the negative, are you ready? I'm ready, sir, um, madam. Okay. 
We will just uh, place the uh, timer. Eight minutes. Good okay. afternoon. Okay. For a while po, a fiscal. Okay po. Okay, okay na? Po. Okay. Your timer starts now. Good afternoon, team judges. My first question is... Uh, for a while po, fiscal. Fiscal, fiscal na nila po. Nagay lang po natin yung timer para po uh, may guide. Okay, okay po. Na. Your timer starts now, sir. My first question is, the 2000 Udang case was decided by the 3rd Division, correct? Well, yes actually, no? I'm, I'm, I'm not familiar if if it's the 3rd Division. I, I'm not quite sure. Okay, but if let it's me proceed to my division. next question. Okay. Okay. Uh, you are not aware that the 2019 Tulagan case was decided by the Supreme Court and Bank. Are you aware of that? Sorry? Are you aware that the 2019 Tulagan case was decided by the Supreme Court and Bank? Well, you are not aware? Yes. Just, just say you're aware. Okay. Yeah. I am I want to inform you uh, Panero, that the 2000 that the 2018 Udang case was decided only by a division, the third division. Now, of course, as a lawyer, you are aware that a decision rendered by a division can be modified or reversed by a decision rendered en bank, correct? Yes. Yes or no only? That's a very categorical question. Uh, he answered yes, yes sir. Uh, I heard it. Okay. Now, do you also agree that the pronouncement in Udang was just taken verbatim from the decision in Malto? Yes. And uh, with respect to the new case that uh, you brought up, was that decided by a division or decided and bank? Why is that material? Let, let me check. Do not, do not ask me. I'm asking you. Well, I, 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 I did not actually see if it is decided by a division or or end bank. Okay. So, you are also aware that even with that new decision, assuming it is decided by a division, you are aware that a decision rendered end bank cannot be modified or reversed by a decision rendered only by a division, correct? Can you can you come again? Are you aware that a decision rendered en bank cannot be modified or reversed by a decision rendered only by a division? You are not aware of that, Panero? The a decision by a, a division can be modified by a decision of the Supreme Court and bank. Is there that, is a decision and bank. There, okay, let me repeat. There is a decision and bank. Do you agree that a decision and bank cannot be reversed or modified by a decision rendered only by a division? Do of you course, agree to that statement? Course. Okay. Now, off to another topic. Do you believe, Panero, that before an accused can be convicted of sexual abuse under Section 5B of RA 7610, the prosecution must first prove that the child was subjected to the coercion or influence of an adult syndicate or group, correct? Yes, as an element of so, the crime. So if there was no coercion or influence of an adult syndicate or group, there would be no violation, correct? Yes. And the consent of the child would be material because since there was no coercion or influence coming from an adult, then she could validly give consent to such sexual act, correct? Well, I have to disagree with that one. I say okay, I cited me, several cases already. Okay. Let me proceed to my next question. Of course, it is your stand that the age of sexual consent is always 18, correct? Yes. In fact, you even said that there is a Supreme Court decision that states that the age of sexual consent was never 12 and that it was always 18, correct? 
Sorry? Was that part of my presentation? You're talking about sexual consent, Panero. I am, I, this is in relation yes. to your claim that the age of sexual consent is 18. So this is very material. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, what is that SC decision that you claim that uh, the age of sexual consent was always 18? Was, was, was 18 is the Udang case and the Malto case. On, in the 22 minute and 8 second mark of your live stream on March 7, 2022, you said, and I quote, Meron tayong video na ganun eh. Balikan nyo yun. May sinait ako na batas doon na sinabi ng Supreme Court na it was never 12 and it was always 18. Is that referring to the Odang case, Banyero? Or well, the Supreme Court? I, I think that's, that's not part of this debate already because that's my live stream. That's not for you to judge, Banyero. <laughs> I am asking, you are under cross. This is actually related to your, your claim that the age of sexual consent is 18 yes it's it's okay. it's 18 but when in when when it comes to like supreme court uh decisions uh saying in verbatim that 12 it was never 12 and it is 18 it's it's not a direct quote when i i i said that in the live stream and i didn't say that here in fact what i said here was what they said and not what the Supreme Court said. Plus you That's why I also, I also showed you. I okay. also showed you clips and search results. Let me just proceed to my next question, Panero. Now, okay. um, <clears throat> you said that the general rule is 18 and the exception is 16. What is your basis for saying that? I, I did not say the exception is 16. I did not say the exception. There, be, there can be exceptions. Just like what they said in the Tulagan case. I think you must misunderstood what I said. I didn't say 16 is the exception. There can be exceptions. Like what they did in the Tulagan case. By the way, uh, is it your stand that the legal age of 18 is also the age of sexual consent? Well, that's that's what I'm trying to prove here. Okay. 18 okay. is the age of sexual consent. Okay. Okay. Let me proceed to my next question. Uh, in relation to your claim that 18, the legal age, is also the age of sexual consent, uh, what is your basis for saying that 18 is 18 as the legal age is, is also the age of sexual consent? Can you cite a particular Sorry? law that's, that says? No. Well, I, I did not say that the legal age. You are, you are conflating both of them. You just admitted you, a while ago. You just admitted a while ago, Panero. You cannot, you cannot deny that now. Well, that, okay. The legal age, the legal age being the same number... Okay, the cross examination uh, for the negative uh, gentleman for the uh, for the negative is already done. It's already times up, so we have to be ready for the uh, opening speech or rebut rebuttal of the gentleman for the negative. But before that, we will give a, a time break time or prep time of two minutes. All right, mga kasama, 52 minutes past the hour of 4. We'll take a short break. Wag ho kayong aalis, tuloy-tuloy po ang ating debate ngayong hapon. Dito pa rin sa The Debate, Age of Legal Consent, mga kasama. Sa pagbabalik ng DCXL, Usapang Batas Special. The Debate, The Debate, Usapang Batas Special. <laughs> Oras po natin, 53 minutos makalipas ang alas 4.
That time check was brought to you by ACS Manufacturing Corporation, ISO certified, world class quality. ACS. That time check was brought to you by ACS Manufacturing Corporation, ISO certified, world class quality. ACS. That news was brought to you by ACS Manufacturing Corporation, ISO certified, world class quality. ACS. Para di madaling masira ang ipin ng pamilya, ngayon pa lang. Unique toothpaste for brushing every after kumain. Dahil ang unique toothpaste, may Max Protect formula. Ipin ay Max Salada, Max Protectado pa. Help stop cavities even... Nagbabalik dito pa rin sa The Debate Usapang Batas Special. Painit ng painit mga kasama ang ating debate. Kayo ho ba ang ating mga uh, nanonood sa ating uh, YouTube at sa ating Facebook. Okay, paalala lang po, wala hong mga hindi magandang komento ang pupwede hong ipost sa ating YouTube at sa ating Facebook uh, comment section. Opo, at kung pupwede ho, paki-subscribe ang aming DCXL News YouTube channel at paki-like ang aming Facebook DCXL News. Na bueno, mga kasama, uh, aking pong i-turn over uli sa ating moderators, sa ating uh, Uh, debate ngayong hapon, walang iba kundi ang ating abogada ng bayan na si Attorney Claire Castro. Yes, thank you very much, partner. Uh, I hope the uh, gentleman for the negative is already uh, ready. We will give you 15 minutes. Are you ready, uh, Fiscal? Uh, your timer starts now. Good, good afternoon again, Miss Moderator, to our judges, to the people watching, and most especially to Attorney Libayan. Before anything else, I want everyone to listen to my to my to what my worthy opponent said in this video. Uh, Manila, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte has signed into law a bill raising the age of sexual consent from 12 to 16, when in fact it was never 12. Kabubuhan yung mga tao nagsasabi doon o kaya mga mga pedophiles ang mga tao nagsasabi doon. Kalokohan yun. Sabi niya, I'm sorry but labeling us as pedophiles is an unfair and outrageous statement especially coming from a lawyer who has a half a million subscribers under his spell. I am here to tell everyone, especially to Attorney Libayan, that we are not the pedophiles you unfairly picture us to be. Yes, we believe that 16 is the age of sexual consent, not because we are pedophiles or PDF-file protectors, as you sarcastically call us, but because this is what the law and jurisprudence so provide. And contrary to what you want to impress upon your audience, hindi po ito but usapin tungkol sa pagka-craft ng batas. Dibati po ito tungkol sa ano ang nakasad sa batas, 18 ba or 16? At yan po ang dapat nating pag-usapan. So ano ba talaga ang age of sexual consent? It is that age where a minor can rationally decide for himself or herself whether or not to engage in any sexual activity with another person. Unang punto po. When we talk about age of sexual consent, it should always refer to a minor. It does not refer to a person of legal age. There is no question and it was never an issue that a person of legal age can validly give consent to a sexual act. And why do I say that the age of sexual consent should always refer to a minor? No less than the Supreme Court in Bangayan versus People GR number 235610, September 16, 2020, declared that the capacity to give sexual consent refers to individuals between 12 and below 18. Kaya mali po ang sinasabing 18 ni Ginoong Libayan. Malinaw pa sa sikat ng araw na ang sexual consent ay tumutukoy lamang sa isang minor de edad. Before it was 12, now it is 16 pursuant to RA 11648. Having established that the term age of sexual consent should refer only to a minor and not to a person of legal age, this leads me to point number two. And that is, it is erroneous for Attorney Libayan to assert that 18 is the general rule or he already denied, he already denied it earlier that uh, 16 is only the exception. 
18 po cannot be the general rule because magkaiba ang konsepto ng consent under civil law sa konsepto ng sexual consent under criminal law. Hindi po pwedeng pagsamahin ang dalawang magkaibang konsepto. Sabi nga dito sa Bangayan case, these two are these two concepts are distinct from each other and have differing legal implications. It cannot be applied to consent within the context of sexual predation. Bakit magkaiba? Yung 18 kasi ay tumutukoy lamang sa aspect sa aspect aspectong civil ng buhay ng tao. Pag 18 ka na, you can now enter into marriage, sign contracts or buy and sell your own property. Pwede ka nang pumasok sa anumang legal na kontrata. But the act of a minor in giving sexual consent does not pertain to any contract in the context of civil law. It merely involves a minor's rational decision to submit herself or himself to a private sexual act or sexual activity for purposes of sexual pleasure. Hindi po pumapasok sa kontrata ang isang menor de edad pag nakikipagtalik siya sa ibang tao. There is no contract that is created when a 16-year-old minor, for example, decides to have sex with another person. Considering that we cannot apply consent as a concept in civil law to criminal cases, it is therefore wrong to say that 18 is the general rule and 16 the exception. Point number three. Like a damsel in distress, Attorney Libayan relies heavily on the Odang case as his knight in shining armor. Sinabi po kasi sa Udang that a child is presumed by law to be incapable of giving rational consent. But this sweeping and confusing pronouncement has been junk by the subsequent N-Bank decision in People versus Tulagan. Ano ba ang sinabi ng Supreme Court sa Tulagan case? Maling mali raw yung sinabi sa Udang na walang kakayahan ang isang bata na magbigay ng sexual consent. Instead, the Supreme Court in that case recognized the capacity of a child to give sexual consent. As a matter of fact, ang kakayahan ng bata na magbigay ng sexual consent ay pwede pa nga itong gawing depensa ng mga taong kinakasuhan ng child prostitution at sexual abuse. You might wonder, Fiscal, bakit palagi mong sinasambit na 12 ang age of sexual consent? Sabi mo 16. At the time po kasi the Tulagan case was promulgated, 12 was still the age of sexual consent. Now it is 16, pursuant to RA 11648. The amendment, take note, in RA 11648 is a mere mathematical increase from 12 to 16. It did not modify the principles laid down in Bangayan and Tulagan about age of sexual consent. To repeat, hindi na po prevailing jurisprudence ang udang. Binasura na po ang kaisa-isang jurisprudence na pinanghawakan ng aking panyero. Sabi nga ni panyero, without valid citations, medyo alanganin. Di ba panyero? It is also quite laughable that despite the clear pronouncements in Bangayan and Tulagan, Attorney Libayan would seek refuge in the phrase we take exception to the sweeping conclusion as if to say that 16 is only an exception. Wrong again po. With all due respect, this is a lame excuse bordering on absurdity. You know why? The phrase take exception is an idiomatic expression lang po that simply means to object to something or to express disagreement with something. The Supreme Court therefore simply objected to the sweeping statement. It did not expressly or impliedly create a general rule and an exception. So, apat na punto. What then is the age of sexual consent? Under RA 11648 that amended the provisions of both the RPC and RA 7610, there is no doubt that 16 is used as the threshold age. When we say 16 is the threshold age, Kinikilala po ng batas na may sapat ng kakayahan ang isang 16-year-old minor na mag-decide para sa kanyang sarili kung papasok ba siya sa isang sexual na relasyon. Pag below 16 ka, kahit na ikaw pa ang may gusto, the law presumes 
that your consent is immaterial because of your presumed incapacity to, dis to, to discern right from wrong. My worthy opponent claims that RA 11648 does not refer to age of sexual consent because according to him, obvious na obvious daw sa title pa lang na it refers only to statutory rape. But the title of the law is not the law itself. It is a rule in statutory construction that the meaning of the law must be determined from the language of the statute as a whole and from a general consideration of the words used in this law, the intention of the law is to make 16 years of age as the reference point in determining the validity of a minor's consent to sexual acts. You can readily observe the same point in Section 1. Please look at the underlined portions on rape. Section 2 on qualified and simple seduction. And Section 3 on child prostitution and other sexual abuse. Hindi lang po rape ang subject matter ng RA 11648, gaya ng sabi ni Attorney Libayan. May mga nagsasabi rin na hindi raw tumutukoy sa age of sexual consent ang RA 11648 dahil hindi raw expressly nakasulat ang words na age of sexual consent. Wala ka talagang mababasa dahil ang term na age of sexual consent is actually a term born out of judicial interpretation. Prior to the enactment of RA 11648, there is already a judicial pronouncement that the age of sexual consent is 12, which is now 16, as can be gleaned from the rulings in Bangayan and Tulagan. And to those who are stubbornly insisting on the 18 bandwagon, let me throw the question back to you. Is there a law that specifically states that 18 is the age of sexual consent? Is there a Supreme Court decision that states that the age of sexual consent was never 12 and it's still not 16? There is none. Zero po. I only heard that from my compañero who unfortunately does not represent the Supreme Court. What is ironic po is that my opponent who claimed in one of his live streams that he has never heard of 12 being the age of sexual consent and who still claims to this day that it was never 12 and it's still not 16, debunked himself when in another live stream he even read the separate concurring opinion of Justice Leonen in the Tulagan case recognizing and acknowledging that the age of sexual consent is 12 which is now 16 under RA 11648. Ah, okay. Okay, tama, tama. O, bago tayo pumunta doon. Bago tayo pumunta doon. Tama nga pala yung citation ko, no? Yeah, GR number 227363. Ito yun. Hindi ko alam kung bakit hindi ko ma-search kanina. Ang haba kasi nito. The age of sexual consent in the Philippines is 12 years old, period. ba? According to the United Nations... International Children's Children's Emergency Fund, this is one of the lowest globally and lowest in the Asia-Pacific region. The average age of consent is 16 years old. Diba? The age of major majority, however, is 18 years old. Minors or those below 18 have no capacity to enter any contracts or marriage. Yet strictly reading the provisions, yet strictly reading the provisions of the revised penal code, any minor above 12 years old, may validly consent to sexual intercourse and lascivious conduct with an adult. Number five, the passage of RA 11648 likewise reflects the legislative intent setting 16 as the threshold age for giving sexual consent. No less than Senator Ontiveros, the principal author herself, categorically acknowledges that RA 11648 was passed for the purpose of raising the age of sexual consent from 12 to 16. Tinawag niya pa ngang Age of Sexual Consent Act, ang RA 11648. Our passage of the Fed law is also actually in line with the recommendation of the 2016 UN Committee on the Elimination of discrimination against women and the recommendation of the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child to raise the age of consent in the Philippines from 12 to 16. Ano ba ang significance ng mga UN conventions na ito? The Philippines being a signatory to these conventions, it cannot neglect its international obligation to put into fruition the recommendation of these committees to raise the age of sexual consent from 12 to 16. 
These, rec these recommendations are the reason why RA 11648 was passed into law po. So nakita nyo na, United Nations na ang nagsabi na 16 dapat ang age of sexual consent. Take note, 16, hindi po 18. So kung tama yung paniniwala ni Panyero na 18 dapat, eh bakit 16 yung inirekomenda ng iba't ibang delegasyon ng mga eksperto na nagtataguyod sa kapakanan ng mga bata at kababaihan? With these categorical pronouncements in Bangayan and Tulagan, coupled with the clear mandate of RA 11648 and backed up by the UN by the said UN conventions, there is no doubt in my mind that truth is on my side. Hindi pala kami ang fake news. Back to you, Ms. Moderator. Thank you very much uh, to the gentleman uh, for the negative. Okay, we will give time to uh, Attorney Libayan for his cross-examination. Are you ready, Attorney Libayan, gentlemen, for the affirmative? Are you ready for the cross-examination? Yes, po, I am ready. Okay, we will give you eight minutes for a while, po. Okay, na? Okay, your, your cross-examination starts now. Okay, um, my first question is, uh, you, you read in the Tulagan case that... Uh, uh, Consent can be defense, a defense, right? Yes, yes. That means if you have sex with a minor, you can be sued and use that as a defense, right? Yes. My point there is you can still be sued. Correct? Does it matter? It does not prove your point. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, you said that uh, the concepts of uh, the consent in civil law and the concept of giving um, sexual uh, consent is different, correct? Yes. But the number can be the same, right? Pardon? Come again? But the number can be the same. I am sorry, I do not get your question, Attorney Libayan. Can you can you repeat the question? What, what I mean is, what I mean is the age of sexual consent and the age, the legal age in uh, giving consent in relation to uh, civil obligations can be the same number, meaning 18, already... correct? I already pointed out that there is no question and it is not an issue that a person of legal age can validly give consent to a sexual act. That's not the just, issue. Please, please, just, just, just answer yes or no if the number can be the same. Yes, with qualification. Okay. Also here in uh, you, you, you mentioned you said that uh, that um, tulagan overturned or abandoned utang, correct? Yes, precisely. But you also said, and you also read, that it only took exception of the sweeping statements, right? You have different meanings to take exception. So I, I yes, don't agree yes to your... Yes or no, yes I or don't no. Agree. May we ask no, no, the uh, no, gentleman no, for no, the negative to answer? No, no. If the, ans if the question no, is answerable by no. yes or no, kindly answer yes or no. No, no, no. Okay, now... I will read to you the exceptions. One moment. The exceptions are in relation to the sweeping conclusions that a child is presumed by law to be incapable of giving rational consent. Right? And the consent is that consent is of a child is immaterial in criminal cases, correct? No, I don't agree. That's, those are the only those are the only matters Sir, that that's were taken. Uh, you, you cannot you cannot force me to admit. That's your point of view. So the answer I is no, no, Attorney Libayan. Okay, move on. Okay, now uh, you also said that. Uh, well, let's go back to the civil definition and uh, the the sexual consent. Civil consent and sexual consent. 
in Udang, it was said that one moment. The harm which results from a bad from a child's bad decision in a sexual encounter may be indefinite in infinitely more damaging to her than a bad business deal. Now, now, do you th- uh, do you agree with me that the Supreme Court in saying this is uh, implying that uh, more protection should be given to a person engaging in sexual intercourse than a person who is engaging in business? Yes or no? No, no, I don't agree because just just answer yes or no. So you don't agree that I don't when agree. the Supreme Court said the maybe harm allowed, which results may, from may, a chance maybe bad decision in a sexual in- Sir, uh, you can do that maybe during... Allow me to explain yeah. also. Uh, cut mo na yung time. Uh, stop mo na. May you can do that, uh, sir, uh, during your uh, during the closing speech, Your Honor. Ah, yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Now, uh, in uh, De La Cruz versus People of the Philippines, year number 2455516, June 14, 2021, the, se- the, the, court, sir, the court said there that uh, the age or the age gap actually is material because if there is vast difference in age between the victim and the offender is indicative of coercion and intimidation. Do you agree with that? I agree, but that is not the only factor in determining the validity of the consent of a child. Okay, just 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 answer yes or no. Okay. My question again to you. For for example, for example, there are people in the room ages 12 to 16 and they ask you oh sorry uh 16 to 60 one six to 60 and they ask you they ask you what uh what is the youngest age of a person wherein i can have sexual intercourse with what is your answer their age is from six uh 16 to 60 and they ask you what is the minimum uh, minimum age of the person that they can have sex with? What's your answer? Of course, I will answer the very obvious. 16 years old, because that is the age of sexual So consent. you will answer, okay, just just, just like that. You will answer 16, disregarding the fact that even if there is, if there is a vast difference in age between the victim and the offender, it is indicative of coercion and intimidation. Like the I said, that's not Supreme the only Court factor the to consider. That's yes not or no? the only factor to, that's not the only factor to consider. No. Uh. Okay. Now, now, uh, do you agree that in the Udang case, it said there that the age of sexual consent is 18? I don't agree. Definitely not. You do not agree. Okay. Now, in the Udang case, do you agree? Did the Udang case alone, do you agree that there it said that uh, a minor cannot give sexual consent? No, because the Udang case has been junked by the Tulagan case already. No. Well, and you, and in relation to your your uh, questions um, about uh, NBank and... Uh, Supreme uh, and bank decisions and uh, division decisions. Do you agree with me that the Supreme Court, even if it decided in end bank and uh, in divisions, they still form part of the law of the land? Yes, but with qualification. Okay. Now. Thank you very much uh, to the two, two gentlemen. And now we will have a break again, a maximum of two minutes for the uh, our judges to throw questions to the uh, two opponents or two adversaries. Okay, so we will have a break. All right, mga uh, kaugnay sa ating uh, usapin. 
Patungkol sa age of legal consent mga kasama 18 o 16 ay magpapatuloy dito pa rin sa ating special presentation ng programang Usapang Batas ang The Debate. Pero bago tayo magahanap buhay, please subscribe mga kasama ang aming YouTube channel DCXL News at ang aming Facebook ang DCXL News. Pakilike po at syempre huwag kalimutang makinig parati dito sa DCXL 558 RMN Manila. It's 19 minutes past the hour of 5. Magbabalik pa rin mga kasama ang Usapang Bata Special ang The Debate. The Debate. The Debate. Usapang Bata Special. That Time Check was brought to you by ACS Manufacturing Corporation ISO Certified World Class Quality ACS That Time Check was brought to you by ACS Manufacturing Corporation ISO Certified World Class Quality ACS That News was brought to you by ACS Manufacturing Corporation ISO Certified World Class Quality ACS Sanfon Vitamin C Ang alkaline No Vitamin C Ako si Eri Dati ang hina ng katawan ko Maambunan lang ng konti Nagkakatrangkaso na agad ako Pero after ko mag-take ng Sanfon Vitamin C regularly Malakas ng katawan ko Sanfon Vitamin C Ang alkaline No Vitamin C Mabili sa pinakamalapit na butikas sa inyong lugar Si Mommy at si Washing Machine Believe sa Pride Washing Machine Detergent Hello Washi Hello Mommy Laundry day na naman Ready ka na sa mancha, chocolate, putik, libag Kaya yan ang Pride Washing Machine Detergent My triple stain away formula Tanggal ang makapit, malikit at malupit na dumit mancha Easy, easy ang labada Mula noon hanggang ngayon All you need is Pride All you need is Pride Pride Detergent, manufactured by ACS Manufacturing Corporation. ISO certified, world-class quality. ACS. Hello, beautiful people! Ako po ang inyong tita Winnie Cordero. Matanong po ninyo, bakit pa natag ang loob ko sa MX3? Dahil ito ay tested and proven na may alpha, beta, at gamma mangosteen. Mga natural na nutrients mula sa mangosteen. Meron din itong seal of quality excellence at manufactured sa GMP at ISO certified na planta. MX3 is my choice. Tunay, natural, at original. Mahalagang paalala, ang MX3 capsule ay hindi gamot at hindi dapat kami din panggamot sa anumang uri ng sakit. Sa panahon ngayon, ikaw ba'y sigurado? Ikaw ba'y protektado? Ang pamilya ay issue. Pabalik dito pa rin sa ating special presentation ng The Debate. At balikan natin uli ang ating moderator mga kasama. Walang iba kundi ang ating nag-iisang abogado ng bayan na si Attorney Claire Castro. Partner? Yes, oo. Gusto ko lang malaman ng mga viewers natin and listeners, ang papil po ng isang moderator ay para po maging maayos yung flow ng debate natin. Uh, kung tayo man po ay papasok in the middle of uh, pagtatanungan or during mm-hmm. the cross-examination, it's because uh, na, meron po kasi tayong timer. Yeah. So yung mga, unless, hindi naman unnecessary, but yung hindi po kasama sa tanong, mm-hmm. pag kasi you are being asked uh, a question answerable by yes or no, mag yes or no lang. Ganun din naman po talaga sa court. Yeah. And then you will be given time uh, during the close speech, yung kumbaga i-re-rebat nyo yung bawat isa, doon nyo po ma-explain. And you will be given five minutes. So doon po sa mga, ito lang yung na- nakapag-start lang, kaya po tayo po mapasok is para maging smooth yung flow. Hindi po tayo nakikialam dahil wala naman po tayo kinakampihan dito. So sana po maintindihan nyo po, even in courtroom po, ganyan po. Kahit po si judge na nakikinig, tapos mag explain po yung iba, pero answerable by yes or no, especially during the cross-examination, mm-hmm. papatigilin po talaga kayo ni judge, ng judge, at sasabihin na you answer yes or no. So, yun po yung proseso po talaga. So, wag niyo pong isipin na negatibo po yung ating ginagawa, being the moderator. And now, we are now to the question and answer portion. And uh, I would like to call Of course, the beauty. Beauty muna. Before anything else. Diba? May we call on Justice uh, Tess Teresita Baldos. Yes. And, um, thank yes, you. Apo. Uh, okay, thank you, Attorney Claire. Apo. Your, you, you do not have any ano po, timer for the your question, ah, but the, okay. the participant <laughs> will be given one minute to answer your question. And then after ah. one Uh, after your question po, and you have the follow-up question for uh, regarding his answer, you can do so po. 
Okay, okay po? Okay. You okay? Thank we, you. We okay, will call on you. first, um, for gentlemen, the, for the affirmative. For the affirmative side. Opo, the, for the affirmative side, okay. Attorney Libayan. Okay. Ikalang po, tawag uh, natin. Attorney, yes, okay. yes, Your Honor. Opo, we will, uh, we will, okay po. Okay. Uh, Attorney Libayan, uh, your stand that uh, the age of sexual consent is 18 is based basically on Republic Act 7610, right? Yes, Your Honor. And some of the some of the cases that I have cited. Okay. Now, uh, in in Section Three of Seventy Six Ten, um, mm. one of the chil the term children is defined as eighteen years of age, right? And that is basically where you you base your uh, stand. Mm. Uh, minor, uh, below 18 years of 18, age. It's 18, yes, 18 years of age. Children are considered those uh, b below 18 years of age? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. Now, can you... Yes, Your Honor. Okay. In the same definition of terms of 7610, which seeks to protect children against child abuse, uh, there are six instances which are uh, enumerated there. Uh, can you tell me... Which of the under which of these circumstances or instances can sexual consent be interpreted to mean? Well, uh, I would like to direct your honor to section five because it says here uh, child protection and other sexual abuse. It used the term uh, children, whether male or female, who for money, profit, or any other consideration or due to the coercion or influence of an adult syndicate or group indulge in sexual intercourse or lascivious conduct are deemed to be children exploited in prostitution and other sexual abuse. In this particular section, Your Honor, it said that uh, a child, a child who is influenced by an adult is deemed as a person who is sexually abused. Um, but this concerns child the sec the si the section that you cited concerns child prostitution, right? Yes. No, so not, not is, only child prostitution, yeah. Your Honor, also sexual abuse. Because sexual abuse <laughs> is covered, <laughs> yeah, child prostitution, sexual abuse. So this means that this is for, this is for uh, self gratification or for as a means of occupation for earning money, right? And not for, not where uh, consent is vitiated. Am I correct? Uh, no, Your Honor, because it says there. We will give Attorney Libayan thirty abuse. seconds to answer so the it, question. It's, 30 seconds, Attorney Libayan. Specifically, uh, yes. Uh, Your Honor, it's, it said uh, child prostitution and other sexual abuse. So it is very broad, Your Honor. Uh, so it's not only about prostitution. Okay, so my time, I mean, my turn is up. Yes, 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 Justice. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Justice Te Teresita Baldos. And now we will be calling Justice Alfredo Ampuan to ask questions to the gentleman for the affirmative. Thank you. Am yes, I po. clear? Yes, Pop. Uh, now, I will just ask my question to both the affirmative and the negative. Is justice, justice uh, ne affir affirmative muna po. Uh, <laughs> eh. Okay, affirmative. Did you mention any jurisprudence? that uh, was uh, uh, promulgated by the Supreme Court in relation to uh, cons uh, to a uh, sexual intercourse consented by a 16-year-old and below? Uh, I, I did consented not, Your Honor, because... Consented sexual relations uh, of a 16 and below. Is there any mention about no, it? No, Your Honor, I... There was no... I, I, I did not present any... Yes, Your Honor, jurisprudence in relation to that. I presented jurisprudence wherein uh, uh, 
a, a person was uh, convicted. Even yeah, if, but we're uh, talking about the... consent here, is it not? We're talking about consent yes. here, is, is it not? And are you aware of the provision of uh, Republic Act 11648, particularly uh, uh, the Section 1? Yeah? That uh, a 16-year-old may give consent to a sexual intercourse provided uh, provided that the uh, partner must not be must be must not be more than 3 years older, older than him than, than her uh, and, and i'm aware of that i'm be, aware of that your honor yes your honor but that it, it, it uh, like, about, like my it, position it talks your about, honor yeah it talks about clearly it talks about consent clearly is it not yes your honor but my my position your honor is uh, those are exceptions Exception. Yes, you are. But we're talking about a sixteen years old, a sixteen year old, but not under thirteen. Yes, yes, your honor, can, but that is see, an she exception. She can give consent. She can give consent, provided that the uh, that the partner must not be uh, three years older than her. Is yes, your honor. As a matter of exception, as so a matter of exception, your honor. Yes, Your Honor. Can can I elaborate, Your Honor? You can. So you would like well, to elaborate uh, the law? You would like to elaborate the law? No, Your Honor. I, I would like to give an uh, an example, Your Honor, why my position is 18 years old. Because it is the general rule, Your Honor. Like, for example, uh, in the application of criminal laws, Your Honor, the general rule So are is, you, are you saying is, that this is a special law? Because you are talking about general law? No, Your Honor. It... it, it it is an exception, Your Honor. The court, my position is the court, Your Honor, can make exceptions. So if it is an exception, it, it will is... prevail. If it is an Sorry, exception, Honor. as you said, it will prevail. Correct? Your Honor, if, it's, if, if it is present in the particular case, then it will prevail. Yeah. But it yeah, is not the general it, rule, Your Honor. It's, it's very clear. It's very clear <laughs> that a uh, 16-year-old and below can give consent. Provided uh, yes, he as, must as, have the answer. As a matter of exception, minutes. yes, you are. We will give Attorney Libayan 30, mini, 30 seconds exception. to wrap up. Okay, proceed. Attorney Libayan, 30 seconds. So, so just, like, just like what I said, Your Honor, uh, in really, uh, if we compare it to the uh, uh, prospectivity of the application of criminal laws, the general rule is criminal laws are only applicable prospectively. The exception is if it is beneficial to the accused so 18 your honor is the general rule and there are yeah, other okay. exceptions oh. okay okay thank you very much justice and puan thank you for that questions and now we will like to call the chief adjudicator justice oscar herrera jr Yes, uh, thank you, Attorney Claire. Uh, uh, let me first uh, congratulate uh, Attorney uh, Randy uh, Libayan for boldly taking the affirmative uh, stand no? and uh, expounding on his uh, argument. No? Uh, Attorney Libayan, the, uh, the claim that uh, the age of consent is now 16 is because of the passage of Republic Act 116481. Is that, that correct? Uh, and uh, yes, according to you, it is because of uh, those giving opinions, no, that this law resulted in the increase of uh, the age of consent from uh, 12 to 16, no. Yes, your honor. And, no? and that according to you, these people are poisoning the well. Huh? Yes, your honor. Now this law was uh, signed by the president on March 4. 2002. No? I think yes, uh, one of the sponsors is the Senate President himself, no? Senator uh, Miguel Subiri. No? Okay. After the signing by the President on March 4, 2022, the Senate issued an official press release, no? an official press release stating that uh, Republic Act 116481 no, raises the age of consent from 12 to 16. 
no? And it even quoted yes, I saw that, yeah. the Senate President that from now on, nobody can claim that having sex with a kid, the word used is kid, below 16, gave consent. No? My question is, what is your take on that uh, uh, press official press release of the Philippine Senate which passed the law? No? Uh, my take on that, Your Honor, is it's in inaccurate. Because uh, first and foremost, when they said that uh, they raised the age of sexual consent from 12 to 18, it does not follow already, Your Honor. Because uh, as uh, enshrined in the Odang case and the early case of Malto, it said a child cannot give sexual consent unequivocally. So it means, Your Honor, that there is no rising of the age of consent. It was actually reduced from 18 to 16 because of the existence of the Udang and the Malto case, Your Honor. So it is already inaccurate and wrong to say that it was raised from 12 to 16. And Your Honor, the uh, that Republic Act uh, 11648, Your Honor, if we can see in the title, it is affording greater protection if i may your honor you I have will, 30 I seconds quote, uh, Tony Libayan, the, to wrap up the title an act an act promoting for stronger protection against rape and sexual exploitation and abuse increasing the age of determining the commission of statutory rape amending for the purpose of this act blah 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 your honor so if it is promoting for stronger protection it should have been a uh, it, it it's not it is it is impossible your honor that uh protection or stronger protection was given if the age of sexual consent was reduced from 18 to 16 okay so that, even that if for example official, that was the official statement of the philippine senate following the yes your honor signing into law of republic act 116481 we're saying now that uh, there is something wrong with that uh, official statement. Based on the jurisprudence, Your Honor, based on case law, I think that that uh, that statement is inaccurate, Your Honor. Thirty seconds to wrap up, Attorney Libayan. Well, uh, like like I said, Your Honor, Malto versus People of the Philippines uh, uh, was promulgated September twenty one, two thousand seven, and. Uh, it says their consent of the child is immaterial in criminal cases in vi involving violation of Section 5, Article 3 of Republic Act 7610. And it was, uh, it, uh, again, reiterated in the Utang case, January 10, 2018. And, Your Honor, the Tulagan case that the, uh, my, my opponent is saying, Your Honor, did not actually overturn this, but only took exceptions of the sweeping conclusion. Thank you very much, so Attorney Libayan. Thank you, Attorney uh, Libayan. I said that's involved the uh, 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 boldly took taking the, the affirmative stance. No, okay. <laughs> very bold. Thank you very much, <laughs> Justice uh, Oscar Herrera Jr. Thank you, po. <laughs> and now we would like to call back Justice uh, Teresita Diaz Bal Baldos to ask question uh, to the gentleman for the negative. Okay. Fiscal EJ, are you ready? Good afternoon, Fiscal EJ Fabregas. Good, after good afternoon, uh, Madam Justice. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> um, under Republic Act 16, 11, sorry, sorry, 11648, there is a three year gap, three year age difference wherein criminal liability does not attach to the offender. Um, in your opinion, is that age does that age gap apply to one who is below 16 and the other one is below 13 or one where which is below 16 or below 19 or both uh, <clears throat> i think you are referring for, to the close in age gap rule or the romeo yes. and juliet rule yes uh, under romeo the rule and juliet. Po, uh, under the rule po uh, a person below 16 uh, the partner of that person below 16 will not be liable for the crime of rape 
if the age difference between the two does not exceed three years, uh, three years, yes, provi pro provided that uh, the sex is consensual, non-exploitative, and non-abusive. Mm. But that exemption will not apply, Madam Justice, if the victim is under 13 years of age po. Yeah, so you mean uh, there is no criminal liability if the other of the if the victim is below thirteen. No po. If if the victim is uh, below sixteen and his or her sexual partner their their age difference does not exceed three years and the sex is consensual, non abusive and non exploitative, there will be no criminal liability. But when the offended party is below 13 years of age, even if the sex is consensual, non-abusive, and non-exploitative, there will still be criminal liability po. Uh, okay. So, what do you think is the rationale or the wisdom behind creating this Romeo and Juliet uh, principle? I think po, this recognizes the fact that uh, there is what we call in this day and age, this uh, teenage age pre predisposition that they can validly give consent to a sexual act because if we suffocate the law by penalizing couples whose age gaps are not that much uh, different then we might be creating more trouble than uh, a solution your honor yes but um Okay, can I just add yeah. one more question? Yes, ma'am. Yes. You're allowed for yes. justice. Could be creating more. But nowadays, would you agree that uh, minors or even those teenagers below below 16 um, are more sexually exposed to sexual education or to sexual uh, environment than uh, the minors of years ago? when they were supposed to be innocent, right? So, I meaning innocent by way of uh, opening their minds or their uh, their introduction to sex has been early. It's been early enough. So, um, but sex between, sex between a person who is below 16 and below 19 Because that is the three, that is observing the three-year gap yes. also. Yes. Okay, can also be. Uh, it, it wouldn't that be abusive, or uh, because the, the the offender would be a little uh, already has reached the age of uh, consent or the age of reason. Wouldn't that the be reason, exploitative okay. also? That's the reason, Madam Justice, why there is this uh, element. Uh, element that uh, even if the sex is consensual, it should not be abusive and exploitative. So those three elements must exist before we can say that the sexual partner of the person below 16 will not be criminally liable for, for statutory rape. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, very Justice much. Uh, Teresita Baldos. Thank you, ma'am. And now we would like to call Justice Alfred Ampuan. Thank you, thank you very much, yes, Madam po. Moderator. Uh, you can good start afternoon, now, uh, Prosecutor, AJ. Good afternoon, Justice. Good, good, mayong good afternoon. hapon po. Mayong hapon. Maupay nga hapon. Maupay nga hapon, <laughs> sir. <laughs> okay, uh, our topic for today is very specific and very simple. It's just about giving consent to a sexual uh, act, right? Yes, is Your it, Honor. Uh, is it 18 or 16, right? Is, is it not yes, the question? Honor. This is the yes, only Your thing Honor. that we must resolve. Right? So, the, pre, the jurisprudence that were mentioned a while ago by uh, the affirmative and the negative, did it relate to consent? To sexual act? Related po. Especially the cases I cited, the Tulagan. What, 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 what jurisprudence was that that relates to a sexual act? To a consent? A consent to the, a sexual act? The Tulagan case po. 
as well as the Bangayan case po. Okay. So, yes, but po. that was uh, promulgated when? The Tilagan case po, uh, which is an end bank decision, was promulgated sometime in 2019 prior to the enactment of RA 11648. And at that time, Your Honor, the age of sexual consent was still 12 years, uh, 12 years of age. So what will prevail now? Does jurisprudence or uh, Republic Act 11681648? Then complement is either uh, justice because the amendment in RA 11648 is a mere mathematical increase of the age of sexual consent from 12 to 16, but it did not modify or change the principles laid down by the Supreme Court in the Tulagan and the Bangayan cases. That's why, my why, uh, opinion po. Why up to 16 when uh, when the law uh, very clearly provides that uh, uh, if there will be a sexual intercourse between a 16-year-old uh, and below but not uh, under 13, uh, the person cannot be held criminally liable. So, uh, is it not only up to 13? 12 to 13? Based on uh, the, the amendment made by RA 11648 po, um, the, the rule is that a minor below 16 can validly give consent to a sexual act provided his, his or her sexual partner must their age gap three. does not exceed 3 years. Not, yes. not, must not be 3 years old. But, but yes, not, your honor. must yes. not be under 13 years old. Yes, Your Honor. Because even if there was a val uh, there was consent, even if there was even if uh, it was non non exploitative and non abusive, thirty seconds to wrap up. The victim. So so it must be uh thirteen now. <laughs> I It's believe that the rape is thirteen and below. I believe for sixteen is still the threshold age. Thirteen is only the exception to the exception because it would appear, Your Honor, that sixteen being the thre the threshold age. There is an exception, this uh, so-called Romeo and age rule, and then there is a further exception, this under 13 years of age. Because under our, uh, 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 under our revised penal code, 12 years old is a statutory rate. Consent under 12, is, uh, under 12, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Under, under 12. 12. Yes, Your so Honor. So consent is beside the point. Now it's under 13. Yes, Your Honor. Right? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much, Justice Alfred Ampuan. And now we would like to call on uh, Justice Oscar Herrera Jr. Oh, Mr. Okay. Justice, nakamute po. Oh, thank you, Tony Claire. No, congratulations, uh, Prosecutor Pabriga, for your uh, presentation. No, taking the negative uh, side. No, now. Uh, There is no law enacted by the legislature no? which categorically or explicitly states that the age of consent is 16 or 18. Are we agree on that? agreed on that? No law. There is no law. There is no law. At okay. Yes, no, no yes, law. Sir. Okay. Now, you cited cases, both of you, no? uh, the cases of Udang, Tulagan, De La Cruz, and Bangayan. And uh, Fiscal Pabriga, uh, your conclusion, uh, based on your opinion drawn from these decisions, that the age of sexual consent is 16. No? Yes, Your Honor. Otherwise, from the point of view of uh, uh, Attorney uh, Libayan, no? and according to him, it does not matter if one decision is in bank and the other is uh, by division, no? These are all decisions of the Supreme Court that uh, form part of our legal system. No? My question is, do you think there is still need for the Supreme Court no? to clarify in a, uh, a decision, maybe uh, with respect to uh, sexual consent, to clarify what is really the age of sexual Do you think there is still a need? I don't think there is still a need, Your Honor, because there is a decision that states that uh, the intent of the of the legislature is not at all times accurately reflected in the manner in which the resulting law is couched. But mm -hmm. I believe, Your Honor, that uh, 
with the with uh, upon a reading of the whole statute of RA 11648, it clearly set a threshold age of 16. And mm -hmm. no less than your honor, the uh, Congress in their press release categorically stated that it raises the age of sexual content from 12 to 16, your honor. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I also believe, your honor, that uh, while it is true that the Supreme Court only, only, the, only the Supreme Court can determine the intent of Congress. It is also true that when the law is clear, there is no longer need for any interpretation. There is only room for application. And it is only when the law is ambiguous can the court construe its intent. And in the case of RA 11648, there is no more need for interpretation, Your Honor. It's very clear that 16 is being... Thank you very much, uh, uh, Justice Oscar Herrera Jr. And now, it's already 5:51. Uh, Blisan na natin po. Uh, Tatatawagin ko na po. I will call the gentleman for the affirmative for his closing speech for five minutes. Attorney Libayan, are you ready? Okay. Uh, Attorney Libayan. Tayo muna natin yung timer. Attorney Libayan? Yes. Okay. Ready? Okay. For a while po. We will, we will, for a while po. Okay na? Ito nga po at nasaksihan natin yung debate. Uh, the debate is whether or not uh, 18 or 16 is the age of giving sexual consent. Ngayon, as a lawyer, ladies and gentlemen, it is my duty to protect everyone from pros criminal prosecution. As you can see here, if you have sexual intercourse with a minor, you have to belong to the exceptions. Kailangan mo pang i-compute yung three, kailangan mo pang tignan kung walang, kung, kung ano siya, kung hindi siya exploitative, kailangan mong tignan kung gaano kahaba yung edad kasi nga, Kung mas mahaba yung edad, katulad nung sinabi doon sa De La Cruz case, eh, it is already exploitative. So now, what can you generate from that? Even lawyers are arguing. Ano ba talaga? 16 or 18? So, ang gagawin mo, if you commit sexual, uh, sexual uh, intercourse with a minor, then you have to qualify yourself. So if, you, if, you, if there is a need to qualify yourself or for you to belong any of the exceptions that the, the my opponent discussed then do you think it is worthy na maniwala ka na ang age of consent i16 do you think do you think it is it is uh, uh sulit no do you think sulit yon na Nasa 16 ka, pero kinakabahan ka naman, baka hindi ka pasok sa exceptions. That's the problem there. That's why I want to emphasize that the age of sexual consent is 18. Kasi doon, kampante ka. Wala kang iisipin, makakatulog ka ng mahimbing, hindi ka magbabasa ng libro, sandali, maghahanap ako ng defense ko. Kasi nga, ladies and gentlemen, Ang inabaan doon, doon sa udang case are merely the sweeping statements that consent is immaterial. Ang sinabi sa tulagan case, it is material because it can be even used as a defense. So in other words, makakasuhan ka pa rin tapos didepensa ka. Now, if you want to believe that age of sexual consent is 16. Delicado. Delicado. Because the, uh, the child abuse law or uh, Republic Act 7610, it affords protection laban sa mga nag-aabuso ng mga bata. Ngayon, ganito po yan. Kapag hindi nagreklamo yung bata kasi nagbigay ng consent, Kahit nga yung magulang, di ba? Nagbigay din ng consent. 
sinabi dito na yung state bilang parents patre o magulang ng mga bata, sila ang pwedeng magkaso doon sa tao. Take note, nagbigay na ng consent ha, yung bata. Nagbigay din ng consent yung mga magulang. Why can they still be prosecuted? Now, if you want to spend your time, your money, if you have, you want to to exert effort in defending your case, kapag kunwari may nagkaso sa iyo because you had sexual relationship with the minor and you will prove that you belong to the exception, then go ahead. Think of it as 16 as the age of sexual consent. And this regard, lahat po nung mga kaso na pinakita ko sa inyo kung saan sinabi ng paulit-ulit ng Supreme Court na kailangan protektahan natin yung mga bata. That's all for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, gentleman, uh, for the affirmative. And I would like to call the gentleman for the negative. Fiscal EJ, are you ready? Yes, po. Okay, the, your timer starts now. But I have emphasized po in my opening speech, this exercise is merely to identify what is the age of sexual consent under current law. This is not a debate to forward a policy and change the age of consent from 16 to 18 or from 18 to 16. Hindi ito policy debate gaya ng debate po tungkol sa dapat bang ibalik ang death penalty. Debate po ito tungkol sa ano ba talaga ang nakalagay sa batas 16 ba or 18. Now apparently in my opponent in his closing speech in his desire to capture public sympathy would like to make it appear as a policy debate. This is no longer a policy debate. As I said, what we are only here to identify what is the age of sexual consent under current law. Now, going to his legal basis, which is the Odang case primarily, I have already pointed out that the Odang case has been, de has been declared no less than by the N-Bank case of Tulagan as a sweeping and confusing pronouncement regarding the capacity of a child under 18 to give sexual consent. Now, what is the significance of an N-Bank decision? An N-Bank decision po is a decision that cannot be reversed by a ruling of a division of the Supreme Court. In the case, uh, this is precisely the pronouncement of, uh, in the case of Treyes versus Larlar, September 8, 2020, which is also an N-Bank decision. Now, an N-Bank decision is one that comes from the entire members of the, Supreme, of the Supreme Court, unlike a decision rendered by a division that comes only from five justices. Now, ano ba ang ibig sabihin ito? Under Article 8, Section 4 of the 1987 Constitution, it states, and I quote, no doctrine or principle of law laid down by the Supreme Court in a decision rendered en banc or in division can be modified or reversed except by the court sitting en banc. Una, a decision rendered by a division can be modified or reversed by a decision rendered en banc. Ito po ang nangyari sa Udang na isang division lamang ng Supreme Court ang, lagus ang lagusga. Ito ay pinawalang bisa na ng tulagan case na isang en banc decision. Pangalawa, a decision rendered en banc cannot be modified or reversed by a decision rendered only by a division. So kahit pa ano ang sinabi dyan o sinasabi ng People, de, People versus Dela Cruz, since the Tulagan case, since it was only decided by a division and not en banc, it did not and did not overturn the en banc decision in Tulagan. The criterion of the truth is evidence. Now, let us examine what did Attorney Libayan present to prove that the age of sexual consent is 18. The only proof he presented, Your Honor, was the Udang case. And I said, instead of pro propagating what I believe, honestly, is misleading information in social media that 18 is the age of sexual consent, my opponent should instead go to Congress and lobby for the passage of a law raising the age of sexual consent from 16 to 18. While it is true, Your Honors, that it is only the Supreme Court that can determine the legislative intent, it is also true that when the law is clear, there is no longer any need for interpretation. It is only when the law is ambiguous 
may the court interpret its true intent. Unfortunately, the ambiguity, Your Honor, exists only in the fertile imagination of my worthy opponent because the very authors of the law itself, as I had already pointed out, have clearly and unmistakably declared that RA 11648 is a law that raises the age of sexual consent from 12 to 16. And on my part, I have presented more than enough evidence to prove to you that under current law, RA 11648 and jurisprudence, Bangayan and Tulagan, coupled with the clear standard of the international community that 16 is the appropriate age of sexual consent, again, I have no doubt in my mind that truth is on my side. Had this been a debate to forward a policy to change the age of consent from 16 to 18, maybe, just maybe, I would have been on attorney Libayan's side. I have a 17-year-old daughter sitting beside me now, listening and understanding as her father vigorously argues his case as to why 16 is the age of sexual consent. I am arguing not because I am encouraging my daughter to have sex at such a young age, no. No father in his right mind would do Thank that. you very much, uh, Fiscal EJ. Thank you very much. And now, we would like to call back our judges. We would like to hear first from uh, Justice Teresita Baldos to hear her comments and her verdict as to who convinced her more. Thank you very much, Attorney Claire. <clears throat> First of all, may I congratulate our two opponents this afternoon. Uh, both of them were vigorous and valiant in expounding their respective positions. Talaga naman. But uh, the, the issue here, whether it is whether 16 or 18, is the age of sexual consent. For me, is based on the premise that having sex with a minor is male is a crime or talaga it's against our moral principles um sa tingin ko pareho naman sila nag-cite ng jurisprudence ano but of course each to suit his favor or his position uh, I am not here to say whether the Supreme Court reversed itself or not, but as I said, the primordial uh, fulcrum here is whether that is whether 16 or 18 would guarantee the that uh, sex with a minor at whatever age, whether 16 or 18, is wrong or is a, is uh, or should be penalized. Um. Para sa akin, from my mind and uh, to my persuasion, I am inclined to sustain that uh, it is the age of 16 that is the age of sexual consent. And therefore, I give it to the negative side, mainly because Republic Act 11648 is more in point and it's directly related to what we are saying that sex with a minor is an offense. Republic Act 7610, while it, cons while it takes into account the welfare of a minor, encompasses or includes several other acts such as prostitution, trafficking, which though uh, punishable, do not really relate do not really relate or not to the exclusive domain of a minor. I mean, um, a child over 16 and until 18 may still be victimized, but I would say that they are more for gain and not as a victim of sexual, of sexual activity or sexual experience. So um, even as I congratulate both uh, debaters, I would have to give it to the negative side. Thank you. Thank you very much, Justice uh, Valdos. And now we would like to call back Justice uh, Alfredo Ampuan.
Justice? Aya. Okay. Ano yan? Start my video. Okay na? Okay. Kita ka na. Yes. Thank yan. you po. Alright. Uh, congratulations to Attorney Libayan and Fiscal uh, AJ. Uh, actually, uh, sex is not that bad at all, but provided it if it happens, psychological maturity must be considered. So it's not a matter of age. Because actually, uh, my mother is only 14 years older than me. So she got married when, he was, when she was 13. But as I said, uh, sex must be blessed. No? It must not be done uh, out of uh, curiosity and uh, it, na it must not be done to oppressed or uh, it must be uh, uh, blessed, as I said. So psychological in maturity is uh, more important to me than age. If you are matured enough, and engage in uh, sexual uh, activity, then there's no problem about it. Because by being matured, you already uh, know the consequences of uh, doing such a thing. Now, uh, the provision of uh, 11.648 is very clear. No? That uh, if the partner is not more than three years old, Sangkang Webes at ngayon mas pinahaba pa ang kanilang oras alas 9 Here provision of the law itself And so with that, I, same with um, Justice Baldos, I <laughs> vote for the, in favor of the negative. Huh? Because it is very clearly provided uh, under such a law that uh, a 16-year-old can give already consent in sexual activity, provided that the partner must not be three years older than she is. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Justice Alfred Ampuan. And of course, the Chief Adjudicator, Justice Oscar Serrera Jr. May we hear from you? Thank you again, uh, Attorney Claire. No? And uh, I've already congratulated the two uh, gentlemen. No? Uh, it was a very enlightening uh, uh, debate. I learned a lot from uh, the uh, positions taken by uh, both sides no and i want you to i want to thank you both for that no okay the only question now is uh what is the age of sexual consent no and if uh, presented to me as a judge i'll have to resolve no what is the age of uh, sexual consent no we have to go to the law no and the law that we have been uh, arguing about is a uh, republic act 1164 8-1, no? Although it is not expressly uh, and categorically stated there that the age of sexual consent is 16, no? the official statement of the Senate will uh, bind me as a judge, no? there being no other sources to draw an answer from, no? that the age of consent is really 16. No? Okay. Uh, we cannot uh, do away with that uh, official statement of the institution that uh, crafted and passed the law, no? that the age of consent is 16. So I uh, uh, would uh, go to uh, support the negative side. I must state, though, that there are valid uh, concerns, no? valid points and concerns raised by Attorney Libayan. 
in uh, expounding that it should be 18 because that indeed would afford more protection to minors if it will be 18. No? So uh, that is still uh, worthy of consideration. No? And uh, I go with the suggestion of uh, the debater who expounded on the negative side that uh, we should go to Congress and uh, possibly ask Congress to study whether to increase further no, the age of consent to 18. And that is because of the valid concerns, no, issues raised by uh, Attorney Libaya. Okay, thank you. And uh, congratulations again to the two uh, debaters. Thank you very much, uh, Justice Oscar Herrera Jr. And first, first and foremost, we, ha we, hear, we hear from the RM and DZXL 558 would like to express our appreciation to our beloved uh, judges justices rather for giving us their precious time and sharing their valuable insights hindi po matatawaran na ang ibinigay ninyong pagpapahalaga sa araw nito para maisa katuparan ang pinakahihintay na pagdidibate ng dalawang magigiting na abogado para mapalawak pa ang kaalaman natin sa batas patungkol sa age of sexual consent maraming salamat justice Teresita Diaz Baldos maraming salamat justice Alfred Ampuan and of course justice Oscar Herrera Jr. ayan and uh, of course, thank you then po to the two gallant gentlemen who pushed themselves to the limits to impart their knowledge about this topic. Fiscal Erwin James, thank you po, and Attorney Libayan. Actually, lahat tayo panalo rito dahil sa natutunan natin sa araw na ito. So I'll give back the mic to our to my partner, Rajuman Rod Marcelino. Maraming salamat, uh, partner, uh, Attorney uh, Claire uh, Castro, ang ating abogada ng bayan. Maraming maraming salamat din sa mga nanood sa ating uh, Facebook at YouTube channel. Opo, sa DCXL News. Again, sa ating mga hurado, maraming maraming salamat sa ating uh, dalawang uh, debaters. Thank you. Sorry, kulang ang time. Oh, Parang oh. kulang talaga yung time. Sorry. <laughs> May kanya-kanyang support yes. ho. Opo, uh, lahat ay nagbigay ng kanilang mga opinion. Uh, hati, partner. Mm, hati. Opo, ang kanilang mga ano rito, no? uh, opinion sa mga ibinahagi po ng ating mga debaters. Yes. Ganang sabi nga ni Atty, lahat po tayo ay panalo dahil marami ho tayong natutunan sa ating presentasyon ngayong gabi. Yes. Sabi nga, kung hindi lang kulang ang panahon, partner, uh -oh. oras na ko. Mas matagal pa tayo sana mag-uusap dito. <laughs> Tama. At dyan nagtatapos mga kasama. Salamat muli. Ang ating presentasyon. Thank you sa ating digital department. Yes. Kay Alegria. Maraming maraming salamat. Kay Jairus. Jairus sa uh, Peña Florida. Thank you very much. Sa ating technical department, kay Erwin. At syempre sa ating newsroom nandyan si Ryan Reloban. Ayan. At partner sa ating boss kay Boss Rico. Yes! Maraming maraming salamat Thank sa support po. boss. Mm -mm. Dahil eh, siya partner talagang hindi siya nagdalawang isip. Mm -mm. Sige, ituloy natin yung debate na yan. Maraming salamat. At sa mga sumusuporta kay Attorney Libayan. Subscribers, kay Attorney Libayan. And at Fiscal kay, EJ. Kay Fiscal EJ, maraming maraming salamat din po sa ipinakita po ninyong suporta dito sa ating special na presentasyon ng Usapang Batas. Ako po ang inyong lingkod, Radyo Man Rod Marcelino. At ako po si Atty. Claire Castro. Mga kasama, Usapang Batas, bukas ng gabi, yes. alas 7.30 hanggang alas 9. Isang magandang gabi, Pilipinas!